Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here then I make videos about Harry Potter and books. Hello there. <laughs> so today's video is a book related video and I am going to be doing another LGBTQ plus book recommendations video. So I did one of these a couple of months ago, I think it was near the start of this year and you guys really liked it and I've been reading there's so many more LGBTQ plus books this year because there's been more releases. It's about time that people really started to realise the world is not straight and white and cisgendered. It's so much more than that. So I have some here and also there are two which I have gotten recently but I don't have the physical versions of them. One is because I've ordered one and it's on its way because I have the audiobook and that's how I listen to it and the other one is because I lent it to my friend so there we go. Okay, so the first one that we have is The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Abatali. Becky Abatali wrote Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, which I spoke about in my previous LGBTQ plus recommendations video because I absolutely loved that book and this was her most recent one which came out in April time. This focuses on Molly, who has a twin sister called Cassie. Of course Molly is straight and it and it is on her and her take on relationships and how she feels about it. Cassie has a girlfriend and they also have two mums. So the whole book really kind of is very heavy on LGBTQ plus issues and how people react coming out, people's like stereotypes, gay marriage becomes legal in this book and it's how that has made everyone feel and how good that was and how much of a step forward that was. I love the fact that there was so much lesbian, so much bisexual representation and it was just in there and it really did speak about some really important issues and alongside the LGBTQ plus aspects it spoke a lot about family and siblings and siblings when you get into relationships and how suddenly it's not just the two of you anymore and this is a lot stronger with that because they're twins and it was just, I just feel like this book was really good and really important and dealt with some really, really, really important things and it's just, it's really good. <laughs> then we have As I Descended by Robin Talley and in my last one I read Our Own Private Universe by Robin Talley which I loved and this book is also a LGBTQ plus book which focuses on female relationships. So this is Maria and Lily who are the school's ultimate power couple and they want to win this award. And then there is this girl called Delilah who also kind of poses a threat to be to win the award rather than Maria who Lily and Maria are basically willing to do anything to get her to win it. So yeah, so that's basically the gist of this book. I won't go into any more detail but I really really enjoyed this book. I really like Robin Talley. I think she represents like lesbian relationships in a really good way and really accurately and it's not like kind of taken in a stereotypical kind of way there's loads of things in her books that are spoken about in important ways and dealt with in really important ways and discussed in really important ways and I just feel like she gives an accurate portrayal and that's also definitely the case in our own private universe which I would 100% recommend. So this book is another one of hers which I absolutely loved and which I did also feel like had really good representation. Then we have George by Alex Gino and this book focuses on George who was born in the wrong body and rather than being a boy which is what she was told she was when she was born she's actually a girl and George wants to play Charlotte in the school's production of Charlotte's Web and gets told that she can't play Charlotte because she is not a girl. This book it challenges loads of stereotypes and gender stereotypes because even even if she wasn't a girl why couldn't that role be played why did that role have to be played by a girl anyway and that's another thing which is challenged in this and it's kind of coming out and making everyone see who she really is and dealing with these things and challenging stereotypes and gender like, like norms which are just so ridiculous <laughs> i've been reading so many things recently and not just fictional stuff like this video is just all fictional but I've been reading a lot of non-fiction stuff recently about gender and gender stereotypes and gender norms. So this book really kind of challenges those gender stereotypes and it deals with coming out and finding out who you really are and how to kind of fit into that and how everyone deals with that and how you feel about that and this is a book I wanted to read for a really long time and I'm really glad that I finally picked it up and have read it and I think it's really really good and important. This book's actually considered a middle grade novel and when I was a kid there wouldn't have been a lot or barely any of novels discussing LGBTQ plus people in adult or teen fiction, let alone middle grade fiction. That just wasn't a thing that was done when I was a child, which is not good, but it's amazing to see that becoming a thing and it just, it's just something that is right because there are people in the world 
this is an accurate representation of people in the world <laughs> and that it's good to know that it's being seen and being kind of shown to so many different people yeah so this is another one which I really enjoyed and I think was really good and definitely would recommend then I read Release by Patrick Ness and this one I gave three out of five stars because the kind of story was not my favorite but I felt as though the way Patrick Ness dealt with the LGBTQ plus side of it was really good the book is called Release and it literally is about having that release kind of coming out and being yourself it focuses on Adam Thorne he is gay he used to see someone he is currently seeing someone and his dad is very heavily in the church so his dad does not agree with LGBT people so it's kind of dealing with that coming out to your parents coming out to people how different people react how different situations react and like I said the story of this was not my favorite but I did feel as though the way that it's dealt with and kind of Adam coming into himself and really kind of standing up for who he is and the thing that he can't change and if people don't realize that then they can you know that's on them and I just think this was done really well and I really 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 enjoyed that aspect of it and I think it obviously plays in well with the title there is a lot of other things that goes on in this book as well themes of friendship and there's a ghost um <laughs> so there's other stuff and I would recommend reading it just because I feel like the, those aspects were done really well then we have Alex as well by, by Alicia Brugman this book is another book exploring identity and gender sexuality and how those things can have an effect on your relationships with the people around you on yourself how you perceive certain things how different ways that you are and kind of that whole thing with again gender stereotypes and identity and I felt like this was a really good one and definitely made me think about lots of things and definitely showed different people and how they react and how frustrating it can be sometimes that you're just trying to say to someone this is who I am and they're just not willing to listen it's really good it's a book about gender stereotypes gender the tagline is why does it matter whether I'm a boy or a girl but it does it really 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 does and the fact that it shouldn't like in the world like people again with stupid stereotypes and stupid things but yeah so this is really good and um, definitely one I would recommend it made me think about lots of things and I really enjoyed it then we have the one that I read most recently and that is Autobiography by Christina Lauren this is a book which I picked up in foils very spontaneously last time I was in London it's really dangerous that the Kirschild Theatre and foils are on the same road because <laughs> every time I go to the show I'm like let's just pop to foils the theater's here this way is foils this way is forbidden planet honestly dangerous <laughs> it's like they know my weaknesses harry potter books merchandise <laughs> so I, we went into foils before the show we saw it on a sunday no one was open foils was open and i saw this and i thought i've heard some things about this i'm gonna buy it this focuses on tanner and three years ago he moved from California to Utah. He is bisexual, so it's some really good bisexual representation in this, um, with bisexual stereotypes and how people react, and then being like, thinking like, I can't like choose. Like he actually has asked at one point, what if you can't like you like girls, why don't you just like girls? Or just that's it. And he's like, I can't not like I can't, I can't just switch one off that's not how it works uh, which is really good like I love they really did tackle some bisexual stereotypes which I thought were really good because there are a lot of bisexual stereotypes and it's really not cool because it's not true but it puts him back into the closet because the town that he moves to is very heavily Mormon and his mum was raised Mormon his aunt is also gay and she got kicked out by his grandparents so his mum kind of doesn't talk to them anymore either and moved to kind of help her moved out helped her sister and all that kind of thing so she doesn't want the same thing to happen so he kind of gets put back into the closet and he doesn't tell anyone not even his friend and then he takes this class where they have to write a book and last year one of the people on the course actually is going to be getting the book published so he takes some of the seminars and some of the, the classes and uh, they they get a thing going the only thing is is Sebastian who is this other guy is being like training to become a Mormon and training to go on his mission and his family are very strict Mormon there was lots of things in this book it discussed loads of bisexual stereotypes and tropes family and how different people can react and the contrast between Tanner's family and Sebastian's family and also religion and I felt like it did that really well it wasn't just a oh my family's religious oh no like it really really explored that in a really good way and I would definitely recommend this there were a couple of things in this that were a bit cliche which 
weren't really necessary but Overall, I think it was really good and it really did explore some important things. Then we have The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. This is the book that I listened to on audio, which is read by Christopher Coulson, who played Tom Riddle in Chamber of Secrets. I didn't know that before listening to the audiobook. It was just a very happy coincidence. <laughs> Books in Harry Potter, like I said, it's all I do. So this book focuses on 17-year-old Henry Montgomery or Monty, and it's set in the late 1700s and he is about to go on a tour with his friend Percy who is known his entire life and his little sister Felicity. His dad is very wealthy, very well off. Monty is expected to when he comes back to help his dad run the family business and join the trade and Monty doesn't really want to. Monty is also bisexual, again it's really good bisexual representation, his dad does not agree with this. There's also what I've seen, I kind of got that idea when I read it and I've seen loads of other people say the same thing and I think Mackenzie Lee said something along those lines. There's also asexual representation in this with Felicity. They go on their tour and Monty has what he thinks are unrequited feelings for Percy but are they actually unrequited? Dun dun dun. And then the whole trip kind of doesn't really go the way they thought it was gonna and loads of stuff goes down. This book was funny, it was good, it dealt with LGBTQ plus issues, it dealt with race issues, with disability and it was just so well done and so good and probably one of the top five books that I've read this year. Please read Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue and if you can listen to the audiobook it's fantastic. <laughs> then we also have Things a Bright Girl Can Do by Sally Nichols. This is the one that I've lent to Bertie so she's got it at the moment. And this book is set in 1914 and is focusing on the time of the suffragettes and they're trying to get the vote for women and do more than just be in the kitchen and get married and have the babies. So this book is actually two narratives. So we have Evelyn in one narrative and then in the other narrative there is May and Nell. They are both girls, they have um, a relationship. It definitely focuses a lot on an LGBTQ plus relationship and everything surrounding that at that time and how that would have been perceived during that time but also that kind of does have parallels to now and how people can still act. Absolutely fantastic but really good historical novel as well, it was really accurate um, and yeah it was another one that I thought was really really good. So yeah so those are just some LGBTQ plus novels that I've been reading recently. Obviously I can't speak for all of the representation, a lot of it was good. I'm sure I'll do a part three of this video, I've got loads on my TBR, I've got loads more to be reading. I'd love to know any recommendations if you've got any down below, please, please let me know. We'll let everyone know, share books that you've read that you think are really good down below and we can all, all share books that we love and just treat that as the thing, because it is the thing, you know? <laughs> So yes, I hope you liked this video, I hope you got some recommendations, have you read any of these books? I'd love to know your thoughts on them if you have. Also this video should be going up on Sunday and I just wanted to kind of let, let you know, um, it's not like a big announcement or anything, but on Tuesday I'm going to the hospital to have surgery and I just wanted to, you guys to know I'm going to be out of... Uh, out of action for a bit. Will still be videos, I have pre-filmed and edited some videos and scheduled them to go up over October so there will be videos popping up at least one a week um, if I can finish the editing on time but if you comment or anything like that I probably won't be reading it immediately so I won't be able to do that like same instant interaction as I usually do when I post a video and then the next day look over the comments so I will reply it'll probably just be near the end of October start of November so just as a heads up that's a thing uh, and yeah I post stuff on my Twitter so I'll probably be like more about it on there and if you follow me on there you've probably seen this so that's where I'll be posting updates and stuff but I don't really know like what's gonna happen with recovery time and stuff yeah. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are new here and you want to stick around then you can press subscribe and the little notifications bell down there. And as usual all my links will be in the description, it's run on the road on everything else and my website is run on the road.com. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you're doing really 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 well and I will see you next time, goodbye!